In this lecture, we will continue to learn data structures. But before we discuss the third data structure, I would like to introduce the concept of libraries. I will use Excel as an example to understand this. If you are an experienced accountant, you will have some familiarity with Excel as accountant widely used Excel. In its original download, Excel offers almost everything to get the work done. However, in some situations, we install and use add-ins. Add-ins provide additional functionalities that help us make tasks easier and efficient. For example, the Data Analysis Tool Pack add-in. The add-in can save steps and time in performing statistical analysis. Azure Machine Learning Another useful add-in to do sentiment analysis of customer reviews, finding positive, negative or neutral sentiment from thousands of reviews in a minute without even reading a single review. If you want to know more about sentiment analysis, please check my Udemy course, Introduction to Data Analytics for Accountants. Link is in the description. Anyone can create an add-in. These are built upon Excel Core and may sometimes use other programming languages. The aim is to save time and provide additional functionalities. Now let's come back to Python. Python libraries are like add-ins. They provide additional functionalities and save tons of time. These libraries, which are also referred to as packages, are built on core Python. I will discuss Python libraries in details in upcoming lectures. But for now, let's see how we install and use Python library Pandas. Pandas is one of the widely used Python library. And I can assure you that this is the one you will be using most of your time. First, let's see how to install it, which is just a one time exercise. Once installed, we will see how to make it available for use anytime we need it. This is how we install it in a Jupyter notebook. Exclamation mark which can be found on the key number one, which normally found on most keyboards. Pip install pandas and wait for some time to finish the installation. As it is already installed in my system, I can see requirement already satisfied message, which may differ in your case. I'm parking the word pip for future discussion as it would be too much to digest in one lecture. So now Pandas is installed. It's like you have downloaded it and installed the software on your PC or a Mac. Once it's downloaded, the next step is to make it available for use by import command like this. It's like double clicking and opening an application from your computer. So once it's open, you can perform your tasks. Now, why I have discussed all of this, where the lecture is about data structure. The reason is based on my research so far, the third data structure that we are going to learn is not available in the core Python. The pandas library introduced this object and to me, it is a game changer for Python. It is one of the mostly used structure in data analysis and it is the one most accountant are already familiar. Data frame is like Excel worksheet. It closely reflects structured data, which is a way to nicely organize data in rows and columns. Data frame read CSV file, read SQL type, etc., which make it extremely useful when dealing 
large set of data. Please note this important point. From an accountant perspective, you will aim to transform any data structure, unstructured or semi-structured into structured data. So then you can make analysis possible. So in order to use data frame, we will be using the pandas library. Now let's see how we can create a data frame. There are various ways you can create a data frame from a list, dictionary, from other Python data structures, and even from other data frames. Let's create our first simple and empty data frame. We start with by telling Python that we are using pandas library. This is important because we may be using many libraries at a time. So we need to let Python know which library we are using and what feature function or object we are calling or using. So you can see I started writing the code with library name pandas followed by a dot and then data frame object from that library and saving it in a variable my first df df stand for data frame let's execute this and print it it is an empty data frame because i have not provided any data or information in parentheses as the argument do you remember what an argument is in a function if not please refer back to functions and method lecture for a refresher now it is time to create a data frame from a list profit and loss in short pnl this is our list of pnl items and this is how we create data frame from a list Let's create another data frame with more details. I'm creating another list of a list of P and L items with amounts this time. So it's a list of lists. I'm creating a data frame from that list of lists. And this time I'm also creating column names or column headings. Let's run this code and print it to see how does it look. There you go. These are our columns with headings and these are rows. We will continue to explore more about data frames in the next videos and you will see how useful they are in drawing meaningful analysis from a large data set.